Okay, so Deuteronomy chapter 28, part 8. Remember, they're changing my voice. Before I talk about the locusts and the crops and the trees, ask yourself, what happens if you try to go for the tree of knowledge and you don't have righteousness intact? You don't have the breastplate of righteousness. You don't have the helm of salvation. You don't have the shield of faith, the sword of truth, the sword of scripture, the sword of fighting for what's right, for the right reasons, in the divine order, in the right order. The sword is also a symbol of nobility. It's a symbol of duty. What happens? What happens is you become evil. That's why God said you may eat from the tree of life, the tree of righteousness. But you can't eat from the tree of knowledge because you don't know how to use it. It's like the government, right? Intelligence agencies. They know all these things, these PhD people, also them. But they don't know what to do with it because they're not determined to do God's work. And that's why it's a sharp double-edged sword. It's not a broad sword that uh, a female who's not, un who's not very coordinated can wield. Or, you know, a little kid, okay? It's a sharp sword that's meant to be masterfully used, okay? Especially when the construct, especially when rather the, the design of nature rather was made so that you're gonna be persecuted if you stand with me, okay? It's a sharp double-edged sword of scripture that only the righteous can truly wield and other people are unsuccessful and they look like idiots pretending to be right with God when I am actually right with God. So it says that you will plant vineyards and cultivate them, but you will not drink the wine or gather the grapes because worms will eat them. So in your blood, the grapes turn into wine, right? Which is the blood of Christ, you know, communion, mass. So what happens? There's a reason why the word grapes has the word rapes in it because you're confused. You're drinking the bowl uh, and the cup of God's wrath. And God's wrath, he's mad because your marriages are invalid. Your cultures are invalid, right? Families are a big part of society and life. And you did not build them the right way. So it becomes the wrath of God as you reproduce. Because God is the creator and God is love, especially romantic love as moral clarity is mental clarity. It is romantic clarity. It is spiritual clarity. They all roll together. There is no having one without the others. Just like there's no being righteous without being just. And there's no being righteous without being wise. And there's no being wise without being righteous. So the people who pretend to be wise because of their degree or their knowledge of a craft are just fools with worldly information. They're just skilled craftsmen at best and not truly skilled because they're not working for God. Okay. So it says, the foreigners who reside among you will rise above you higher and higher, but you will sink lower and lower. They say, well, what about the Romans, right? Because it's just mere social status. They sunk to the level of crucifying Christ and lying about God and setting up churches for the purposes of elevating of trying to elevate their cultures and, and families and so on and so forth. They kept sinking lower. The more you do something that's low down, dirty, no good, like lying about God, like pretending to worship God just so you can control people for the government and the governing class lines, the more you sink lower and lower. So the foreigners among them, right? The immigrants, you know, tend to be less, God tends to be less angry at them than the, than the natural citizens of this country because it has to do with complicity. Whoever doesn't gather with me scatters. And if you propound Americanism instead of moral precision, you're scattering with the best of them. One who's slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. If you propound being a skater or a gangster or even a, a foreign culture instead of moral precision, then you're just destroying like the destroying mountain Babylon. And once you're done destroying with your life, you know, while you're destroying yourself, then you will be destroyed the rest of the way and marshaled into the lake of fire. The New Testament does not overrule this. It refines it. It fulfills it. Christ didn't come as a character in the story 
to destroy this formula. He came to fulfill it. He came to bring a sword, not peace, to set fire to the earth. To bring fire is what it says in a different part. Okay. And obviously, I am Christ come back and I've proven that a million times over.